So in Kotlin, one of the consequences of references is that methods receive references to their parameters. And so if that reference is to an object, a method can modify the object that it's passed. Um, for basic types, it works differently because the value contains the, the, sorry, the variable contains the value, but when the variable contains a reference, that allows the method to modify it. So in this case, I've got a person class, and then I have a birthday function that takes a person as a parameter. Um, and what you see is that the birthday method increments the age of that person um, and then returns the new age. And let's talk through with the diagram what happens when this code runs. So essentially, um, on line six, I now have a, a single reference to this uh, person object, right, that I've created. So again, the reference is not the object. The reference me contains a reference to this object that has age 41 when the code starts to run. Now, when I call birthday, one way of thinking about it is while birthday is running, the parameter that birthday receives to set represents another reference to the same object. So now birthday has a reference to the person object that I created on line six. And what that allows birthday to do is when it calls age plus plus, it modifies the age of that person. When the birthday method completes and I use me again to retrieve the age of the person, what I'm gonna get is 42. I'm gonna see the changes that were made by the birthday method. Now again, if you pass a parameter that's an int or a string, it doesn't work that way. But if the parameter is a reference to an object like it is in this particular case, any changes made by that method will be visible to, uh, to the call, uh, to the code that called the method. So let's walk through this one more time. I've got a reference named me to a person with age 41 when my code starts and line six executes. I call this birthday method. Now, when birthday runs, so when I call a method, I wait for it to finish, I pass me to birthday. Now, birthday essentially kind of has its own reference to the object, which it calls to set based on the parameter name that I've established in the when I declared the birthday method. But while birthday is running, you can sort of think of it as birthday having its own reference to the person, but to the same person as me stored the reference to. So I have two references to the same person object. That means that the change to the age that birthday is about to make when I turn 42, is visible to the caller after the method completes. So now using me, the reference that I had before I called birthday, still refers to the same object, but I see the change that was made by birthday to the age.